Hi guys! Yeah, welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Rukumi Bikikra. So, why is it that some people, majorly from the West, fear Islam if it's so positive? So, this was a question directed to Dr. Zakir Naik. So, let's check it out. Thank you for fitting me in. Um, it's been an amazing talk. Uh, you are very inspiring. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm an author. One final question. After hearing all the positive things, why do you think from your experience so many people in the West are intimidated by Islam? What, what, what do you think? Very good question. The brother asked the most important question of the session. Mm. That if I talk so good things, why is the West so intimidated? Mm. It is because of the media. Today, there is virulent propaganda regarding Islam on the international media, whether it be international channels, international radio stations, the newspapers, the magazines. According to Time magazine, in a span of 150 years, from, 1900 and, uh, from 1800 to 1950, there were 60,000 books written against Islam and the Prophet. 60,000. Now it's increased. So depending upon how the media portrays Islam, and you might have heard, I said, the solution for terrorism is there in Quran. I, I, I said that. You heard the answer of mine. But the West is blaming Muslims to be terrorists. I don't know. My government is saying that I'm a terrorist. Do I look like a terrorist? No. Yes. <laughs> but the government is saying that. What do we have to do? That's what the people are saying, that my last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad was a terrorist. I don't agree with it. So what we have to do, we have to practically demonstrate. So the reason whether the West is intimidated because the West is afraid of Islam. Why it's afraid? If Islam is successful, then people won't be able to flirt around with their girlfriends. They won't be able to do fornication. They won't be able to do adultery. They won't, uh, they, they will not be able to have alcohol. They'll not be able to gamble. This is all, I would say, a fictitious happiness. There's something like true happiness and fictitious happiness. I'm being a doctor, when you have alcohol, you feel high. It is a temporary fictitious happiness. Islam talks about permanent factual happiness. And the permanent factual happiness can only happen if you accept it. See, I've been taken away from my country. You know, I did hijrah. You may not be knowing my background because I speak like that. And the non-Muslims in India love me. So when the non-Muslims love me, the government is afraid. So when the non muslims of India start loving me and start praising me, the government tells I'm a terrorist and I'm out now. But they took away all my wealth. For me, I'm very happy. Because happiness is the state of mind. So, what I, so my job as a Dai brother is to remove the misconception of Islam. So I've given the talk on, is terrorism Muslim monopoly? I've given statistics that the first hijack was done by non muslim The first assassination, non muslim You see... In the, except for the last 20, 30 years, you see the history, there are hardly any Muslims involved in terrorist activity. Hardly. And now, there are some Muslims who have been brainwashed by the Westerners. You know the ISIS? I believe it's the handiwork of the enemies of Islam. It is anti-ISIS, I say. There's no ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq. It is not. It is the handiwork of the enemies of Islam Promoting them to spoil the picture of Islam. Where, how can Islam doesn't believe in killing innocent human beings? The person says, I'm a Muslim. La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, and kills the non muslim It is non-Muslims programming them, paying them. You understand? It's all programmed. So, it is the West which is afraid because if Islam spread, peace will spread. If peace spreads, you know, I said in my talk yesterday, that today the whole economy of the world is revolving around riba interest pay. And you know that the, that the banks are ruled only by a handful of families. You may be aware of that. You know, a handful of the families. They are controlling the economy of the world. And we think Fort Knox, you know, it is owned by the American government. No, it is owned by a few Jew, come, Jew families. You know that. So they're controlling the world. If Islam spread, the control will go away. So Islam believes in equality. Islam believes that all human beings are equal just because the rich are not superior. So because of that, you find that there are a lot of movies made against Islam. There are a lot of media. That's the reason we started our own satellite channel by the name of Peace TV. In English, Urdu, Bangla, Chinese. Four languages. 
It's on 15 satellites. And we try and remove the misconceptions about Islam. The moment it became popular, I was not allowed to enter UK. Because when I gave talks, there were 25,000 people. Oh, 25,000 people, problem. In New York, we were going to give a talk in the Madison Square Garden. Now I don't have visa. I went to USA many times. But when there were 2,000, 5,000, they had no problem. When it became 25,000, 30,000, they have problem. The largest audience, they are afraid that people will come to the truth. So what we are doing, we are going by satellite. So Allah has his ways. So the West mainly is afraid of Islam spreading because if Islam spreads, then all human beings will be equal. There will not be some few who will be superior. In Islam, human beings are equal just because the rich are not superior. We can love each other, we can embrace the other person. So Islam, you get the true happiness. So this talk was based on that, that the Islamic value of true happiness is a person doesn't have to be rich to be happy. And actually, if you analyze, brother, the rich people are happy. The rich people require tablets to sleep. The person who is poor is happy. So the true happiness is you understand the life, understand the human values, so that we follow the commandments of a creator. Hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're most welcome. Wow. Beautiful answer, guys. Like, you saying that some people are, you know, actually pretending to be Muslim, whereas they are not. So how, how come they were able to talk like Muslim, you know, dress like them, if those kind set of people are not actually Muslim? Because this thing actually went on and on, even in some African countries, even some people have this mindset that some set of Muslims are what terrorizes the country, this and that. But now, like Nike is trying to tell us that Muslims are peaceful people, very, very peaceful people. But there are some set of people that, you know, they pretend to be a Muslim, whereas they are not. And they use the name of, you know, the religion to do evil things. So he's just trying to tell us that it's the media that is causing it. That if the media is not announcing it or is not spreading such kind of news, that some kind of behavior from those set of people, People will not be afraid of Islam. People will not be scared of Islam because Islam, Islam, Islam is a positive religion and it's a peaceful religion. And like he said now, he said now, that's the reason why they do more of preaching the word, letting people know that this is what Islam is. It goes around to you know spread the good news of Islam so as to shut down this negative thought or let people know that okay well, all these negative things you hear about islam is wrong is wrong this is what islam it really is this is what islam really entails and that was beautiful i love the fact that he, he was able to explain well the issue and you know the solution to the problem and why islam is true thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share comment i'll see you in the next one